Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to cell biology class. We have been talking about transcription and we just went through the process of how we are making our RNA transcript and we have this big old strand of RNA that's just been released from DNA and if you are in a prokaryotic cell that's all it takes uh, even as transcription is occurring it can start translation but in our eukaryotic cells we have to do a few more things. We have to do what's called RNA processing. So you're gonna take your RNA and change it from its original version to what's actually going to be mature and functional. In this video, we're gonna talk about this concept of RNA processing kind of in general and how RNA for ribosomal RNA and tRNA is going to become mature. And then in the next one, we're going to talk about messenger RNA processing. So the nucleolus is a very prominent structure within a nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. The nucleolus or nucleoli are where ribosomes are being assembled, where you are transcribing your ribosomal RNA and putting those RNA subunits together. In a nucleolus, there will be granules and there will be fibrils. The fibrils are going to be where you have DNA that is being transcribed, and the granules are where the RNA molecules are being packaged. So where you're combining your ribosomal RNA with proteins and forming those ribosomal subunits. If you're in a cell that has a lot of protein synthesis, you're needing to constantly make a lot of proteins, uh, you're going to need a lot of ribosomes, and in those cells, the nucleoli are going to be large. They can take up to a quarter of the total volume of your nucleus, just dedicated to making ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA is the most abundant and stable form of RNA in cells. Um, more mRNA is being broken down within minutes or hours. Um, ribosomal RNA is going to be much more stable and it can account for 70 to 80% of the total RNA in a cell. There are four types of RNA that are going to be um, distinguished. They have this S after them, and that tells you where they sediment during centrifuge, centri centrifugation. So if you are going to take a cell lysate and centrifuge it to take these different parts, um, to separate them on a basis of size and weight, um, this tells you what layer of your centrifuged tube you'd have them. So when we add them together, it's not just adding numbers because it's not a weight. Um, you can add things together and affect where they'll centrifuge and have a different number created for them. So sometimes this these numbers can be a little bit um, annoying because they're not added together in an additive number, absolute number kind of way. It's just telling you where they centrifuge if you were to separate those cell particles. Um, the small subunit has one 18S piece of ribosomal RNA. So that piece of RNA is all it takes, assemble it together with proteins to make the small subunit of ribosomal um, of your ribosome. The large subunit of your ribosome, your 60S ribosome, has the other three pieces of RNA with it, 25S, 5.8S, and 5S. Those three larger eukaryotic RNAs are going to be encoded on one transcription unit. So here we have one big, long pre-RNA being made. Um, so this is called a pre-RRNA. And they have these little spacers between them. Those are called transcribed spacers. So they're spaces that are still going to be transcribed. They're transcribed spacers. And then we're going to have cleavage reactions or cutting it open to remove those spacers. And then we're gonna add methyl groups to our pre-RRNA. And um, then we're going to have methylation occurring at our two prime hydroxyl group of ribose. Um, some of the bases are also going to be methylated. And then methylation and cleavage are going to be guided by other RNAs, what are called snow RNAs or small nuclear RNAs. And one thing that's important about methylation is that it can protect some of those sequences of RNA. So some of those sequences will be protected from cleavage. 
which keeps that RNA a little bit more stable. In the nucleolus, that pre-RRNA is going to be processed and the assembly of those RRNA um, is going to happen with proteins to form the ribosomal subunits. So you're going to have the 28S subunit, the 18S subunit, the 5.8S subunit um, that you've just made from pre-RNA processing and your 5S RRNA. Um, and that 5S RRNA is coming from RNA polymerase 3. It's being transcribed separately. And it is going to be made in multiple copies and not take a lot of processing. We're not going to have to cleave it up like this. Okay, next we have transfer RNA processing. In transfer RNA processing, we're going to be removing, adding, and modifying different nucleotides on there. Cells are going to sy synthesize several dozen kinds of tRNA molecules, which are going to be able to create different tRNAs to associate with different amino acids or different stop signals. And then they're going to fold into this three-dimensional structure um, that has these hairpin loops. Some of them also have another variable loop. This would be a variable loop right here. And so they end up with this kind of clover leaf structure overall. Um, kind of like a clover leaf, has these three pieces on it. Um, and they're synthesized as pre-tRNAs um, and then processed into this final shape. So at the five prime end, the leader sequence is removed. We're removing about 16 nucleotides from the five prime end. At the three prime end, we're gonna take out a couple of nucleotides and replace them with this CCA sequence. CCA now we have here. So this is removed, this is replaced, and then we're going to modify a lot of the bases, up to 15% of the bases in this tRNA molecule. We could methylate some of the bases, methylate some of the sugars, and that means we could create some unusual bases. Instead of just regular old uracil, we have dihydrouracil, we have ribothymidine, we have inosine. So we are chemically modifying some of those structures. And we're going to cut out an intron. Um, that an intron is a piece of RNA that we remove that isn't going to be uh, taken out of the nucleus. It's going to be it's just in the way. Um, so we remove that 14, 14 base pair sequence um, or 14 nucleotide sequence um, and some tRNA. So now you have this anticodon loop here. Okay, so at this point you can tell me how do we make ribosomes, how do we make, how do we process our ribosomal RNA, and how do we process our tRNA to have a functional tRNA molecule. Next we're going to talk about um, um, mRNA, that we're going to do things like exons and introns being cut and spliced together, adding caps, adding long tails. Um, we're pretty extensive in our processing of, micro, of mRNA. All right, I'll see you back in a little bit. Bye.